Do you ever wonder why you react to your kids the way that you do? Or why certain family situations really push your buttons? This episode speaks to that. We talk about how understanding your family history can shape your parenting style, and I give you some tips on how to transform those insights into positive changes in your life. Trust me, you're going to see the real benefits in your family, especially as the family holiday gatherings are just around the corner. So don't miss this. Hey parents, welcome to Fulfillment Therapy. Do you want to raise your kids better and have a stronger marriage? Are you up late at night researching marriage and parenting tools and self-care tips? Do you start each day hoping for deeper connections and less chaos, but it ends with family arguments and going 12 different directions again? My name's Kendra, wife, mom, therapist, and growth enthusiast. It wasn't until I discovered how to fulfill my unmet needs that I was finally able to show up as my best self, as a spouse and parent. I realized that by meeting my needs, I could more fully meet the needs of my family with more energy and less resentment. In this podcast, I teach parents skills like boundary setting, prioritizing personal needs, communication, and claiming ownership. Just like my clients, you'll be shocked by the improvement in your marriage, parenting, and personal life when you focus on fulfilling your important unmet needs. Ready to prioritize yourself so you can quit mentally throat punching people? Then grab those earbuds and head outside and let's walk and talk. Welcome back, my friends, to episode number 160 Beyond the Family Album. Digging deeper for better parenting. Even just saying that title out loud makes me kind of laugh because if any parents or grandparents were to hear that, they'd be like, oh no, what is she going to go into? And we all get that way. I'm sure I'd feel the same way about my own kids. But there is a reason we are digging deeper and it's going to help you and your family. I want to start with a story because stories are often where I come up with these topics and why I'm speaking to these topics. I want to talk about a client I recently was talking to about this, and she's been working with me for quite a while. I absolutely adore her. She's wonderful. But she has had some really difficult challenges in her life, some major family issues. And the longer that we've talked and worked together, the more that she's been able to identify some patterns that were honestly beyond her ability to see for a long time. Now, even though I saw those things and I tried to help her understand them, it wasn't until she worked through them herself that she really understood how much these things were affecting her life. All right, we're going to talk about what that means for you, especially when I'm very much a positive psychotherapy approach kind of counselor and therapist. And this feels a little bit problem focused. But there is a reason, and I have seen the fruits of it, so I want you to open your mind to something new. Let's talk about family history for a second. Your family history, as you know, very much shapes your present parenting style. Maybe you were raised with critical parents, so you find yourself being very critical. Or maybe you recognize that from a younger age and you knew you didn't want to be like that, so you have gone the other extreme and maybe been very loving and supportive and accepting of all different things. Regardless, they are both shaped by your family history, whether you went one way or the other way. I want to talk about this today because unresolved issues can unknowingly impact your children if you're not aware of them. Recognizing these patterns helps us break these negative cycles. William Faulkner said, the past is never dead. It's not even past. And for so many of my clients, you see that. It's like when the past is present. I think that's a book out there and a phrase that I hear said a lot. But when we have not healed from the past, it's like it is happening over and over and over again. And if we we could see that spread out view like my clients do in this one exercise that I'm going to talk about, 
I think you'd be so surprised recognizing that you are just one tiny piece in this puzzle. And this puzzle, somebody's been working on it for so long. It is so spread out. And you are just thinking about your one little piece, not recognizing that so many of the pieces around you have shaped the picture that you see. And I'll get more into that in just a second. Our history is always with us, and it really does influence our actions and our reactions. So by understanding it, we can change that narrative for ourselves and for our children. So I want to talk about the power of genograms. Have you ever heard of a genogram before? A genogram is a visual representation of your family tree. Now, it's not just like drawing it out like you might see on a family history website or something like that. It's not that. But this goes beyond your basic family structure, and it shows relationship patterns and things like mental health illnesses or things like divorce or abuse or all of these things. Like this is how I said it can feel kind of problem focused, but again, for a purpose. I remember when I was in my master's program, I did this for an exercise. Uh, I think I mapped out three to five generations of my family, starting with my own children and my husband and going up as far as I could with being able to still get accurate information. I believe I might have gone to like my great grandparents, but I made a lot of phone calls to family members. (laughs) That's always a fun one to to do and it makes people a little nervous, but people that I knew would be more open and receptive And I started gathering information, like, did Aunt Jane have any diagnoses? Did she have any struggles? A lot of times they didn't do that back then, or even really now, a lot of people don't know. So the best that they're able to tell, like, what was going on in her life? Did You can even document things like death, divorce, um, remarriages, different things like that. And there's a lot of YouTube videos you can check out if you want to create one yourself. And you might be like, oh, that's not really something I want to do. It, Regardless, if you do it or don't do it, I want you to understand these concepts and why it's important to understand these patterns. Well, going back to my client, I've done this with a few different clients. I often give it for homework because it can take a while. But when you see it all mapped out, like I think I had one giant poster board that like I mapped out all these things and I did a lot more than probably most people would do. But when you have it all mapped out when it comes to relationships and possible um, mental health issues or abuse or different things like that, you start to see how it affects everybody around you. And you start to see how generational pain transfers. And all of a sudden, the good thing about this is that when you see these patterns branch out all over the place, A lot of people feel very anxious about that and they want to hide that and put it away. But I actually think it is very free to recognize it's not just your story, nor has it ever been. And when we can see things clearly, we can teach our children that like, hey, this story began well before you. Like maybe you struggle with ADHD. Maybe you maybe you have bipolar disorder. Maybe you have three generations of divorces and You want to stop that pattern for your own children moving forward. So you could say to your kids, hey, our family has um, a a family history of substance abuse. And this is something we really want to change. This is something to keep in mind. Look at this genogram. Look at our family. This is where it's all been mapped out. And this is not a judgment thing. Every family on earth has their their struggles, their challenges. And yet, When we know that big picture, when we can see all of the ways it leaks out to other people, we recognize we are not an island. Our choices impact our loved ones. And that can go from how you share your values, how rigid you are, how many people have kind of lost their way, how much uh, friction is there. Like if people, this is another thing you can add in that, like maybe there's um, estrangement so people aren't talking, maybe... There, there's several books that you can get or videos you can watch, but there's even ways to indicate like what role the family members played, like the Joker, the Golden Child, different things, or the Black Sheep. Like all of these things kind of help create that pattern, and it just depends on how deeply you want to go into that. But I found it so 
freeing. Now I'm, I'm getting a little off track here. But just imagine that even if you're not going to sit down and do this yourself, or maybe it could even be a brief family exercise, again, to focus not on everything that's wrong, but to recognize how you can change patterns. It really can be eye-opening, and it's about creating a better future. Again, when you discover those patterns, you discover those recurring themes or that conflict and that extended family tree that have been passed down again and again and again. So when we understand that, it helps prevent their recurrence. It also helps improve current relationships and it kind of normalizes these things that when people go through these things, we all have something that we go through and it's like, what are we going to shape for our future? The past has shaped us. What do we shape for the family that moves on from us? It's so much easier to change patterns when we are aware of them. Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. So this ancient wisdom that he just talked about applies to our family lives too, because as we examine our past, we can make an informed choice or choices about our future. And by ignoring these, it doesn't make them go away, but it allows it to manifest again for another generation. And in the case of my client, that's what she saw, like back and back and back. There's so much addiction. And she was carrying so much shame, so much weight for her own addiction. And I said, wait a second, let's look at this big picture here. This is well beyond you. And that is not to not accept ownership, but to recognize that this is not just her story and that this is a family affair and the family needs healing. And there's only so much you can do when you're an adult child trying to help. But she is now a path paver for her family. And she can create a greater awareness. And she very much has. She's a pioneer when it comes to improving her mental health and wellness and recovering from addictions. And she can teach them in ways they haven't been taught maybe ever, but definitely in generations. And it is so beautiful to see. All right, I want to go back to those examples again. So you can identify things like addiction. So maybe if that runs in your family, you can be more vigilant about substance use and seeking those healthier coping mechanisms for stress. Or if it's divorce, then they might focus on relationships and commitment and recognizing patterns in their life and work towards healthier partnerships and what they can do to have more success. Or maybe we're focusing on mental health struggles. So if anxiety or depression is really prevalent in your family, then if you're aware of this, you can seek that early intervention and support for you or for your children, knowing that's something that you want to break, that that cycle. You want to address and normalize it and move forward from it. Or maybe it's abuse. If you understand that history of abuse, you can set better boundaries, learn to maintain them, learn to set them, learn to enforce them to create that safe environment for you and your family. Sue Johnson said, our parents' lives are the first stories we learn about love. So we learn these things from our parents, but they learn them from our grandparents and our great-grandparents and on and on and on. And Unless we see the bigger picture, it is very hard to know what to heal and what needs more attention and maybe that tender, loving care. Okay, what can we do when we recognize those unhealthy patterns? Well, first and foremost, seek help. And maybe you do have a therapist and say, I want to do a genogram or I want some accountability and I want to go through some of those things. Maybe you do that for your children. Also, setting boundaries, again, a huge one that I've talked about quite a bit on the podcast. But you can also develop better habits and replace some of those unhealthy behaviors, such as communicating better with your family, normalizing some things, recognizing you're not an island and these things do affect generations out or people all around you, even if it's just siblings. Again, as always, (laughs) practice that self-compassion. Understand that these changes really do take time and be kind to yourself as you work through these patterns. My friends, this is not easy, but it is so beautiful when somebody leans in and takes ownership 
and said, like, yes, this is something that has been a struggle for my pa- my family for generations. And there's something that I'm going to do to disrupt that negative cycle. And again, don't forget, this can be a positive cycle as well. I don't want it to just be negative or uh, problem focused, but it goes both ways. But usually the ones that we are trying to fix are obviously negative. So why does this matter for you today as an overwhelmed parent seeking to find greater fulfillment and improve your mental health and wellness? Well, understanding these things and understanding your triggers can help you respond better to stress. It helps you understand those unhealthy patterns and allows you to create these new ones that are more positive, more adaptive. It also improves your self-awareness and leads to better parenting and that personal fulfillment that we're always seeking for. Joyce Meyer, I've quoted her several times, but she says, the greatest gift you can give your family and the world is a healthy you. Again, think about those ripples that spread all over the place, right? It is not just us. We are not just an island. We affect so many people, not only your family members, but your friends. All right, my friends, that is all I have for today. Just a reminder that we have those amazing courses coming up, starting to be released January 1st. So check those out on fulfillmenttherapy.org and find us in all the places in the show notes, my friends. Tint here, and we'll see you back here in just a few days. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, chances are someone else would too. Would you take 30 seconds to share this with a friend who's looking for greater family fulfillment? And while you're sharing, tell me what you think about the show by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. It refuels me when I hear this podcast is helping you, no matter what your house or your hair looks like. I'll meet you back here every Monday and Thursday morning for more episodes. Until then.